given all of the data that we've explored in the last video and that we have over here, the very high debt to GDP burden that Greece has, and the very weak economy, it's already in a deep recession. It's especially apparent when you look at its unemployment rate. This is the period October 2010 to March 2012. Unemployment rate was already high in 2010, and it's just been going through the roof. It's already in the low 20%, which is a huge number. And even that is understating how bad things are on the ground in Greece, because the unemployment is disproportionately affecting the young. So if you looked at the unemployment rate for people in their 20s, it would be much, much, much higher than even this already unbelievably high unemployment rate. And we've already explored that the bond markets are expressing that by asking for higher and higher interest rates from Greece. This, these are the long-term interest rates in Greece. And so the possible outcomes, the possible outcomes that we're talking about here, so this is Greece. the possible outcomes for Greece. The only way that they're able to stay in the Eurozone is if someone essentially writes them a really, really huge check that essentially takes care of a good bit of their debt. So one option is, is that they get bailed out. They get bailed out. by the rest of Europe. And Germany is a major actor here, because they are the largest economy of Europe. But what it, with the bailout, people are saying, hey, look, if we're going to write you a big check, you've got to cut some of your excesses. You've got to cut some of your mismanagement. So the bailout packages are all tied to some form, some form of austerity. Now, we've already talked about We've already talked about why austerity is definitely not politically popular in Greece, but why it's also, it might just be a scary thing to do. Because you already have an ultra weak economy. You have already have unemployment going through the roof. What happens if you get even more austere from where you are now? If you do a drastic cut to government spending from where you are now, this could go to who knows where. To a large degree, this rise in unemployment is due to the last few rounds of bailouts and austerity. And so that's why the Greek people are getting very suspect of this austerity. But if that doesn't happen, and we've talked about this in the last video, if that doesn't happen, the only, the only viable option for Greece is to go off the euro. So leave, leave the Eurozone. The Eurozone is the subset of European Union countries that use the euro as their currency. And we already talked about this would not be a painless process. They would leave the Eurozone. They would maybe, their new currency would be the new Greek drachma. drachma. And with this, it would probably be hugely devalued relative to the euro. So you would have savings wiped out, maybe not fully wiped out, but savings devalued for Greek savers. And they know that already. And that's why, because this, this outcome is looking more and more likely, people are, there's essentially a run on banks in Greece right now. People are going, withdrawing their euros so that they can stuff it in their mattress and so that it won't be converted into devalued drachmas. But that's having the effect of, of really weakening and potentially breaking down the banking system. So you could have bank failures. bank you could have bank failures and the whole strategy of of leaving the eurozone leaving the euro and going to the drachma would be to inflate away your liabilities would be literally to inflate away your debt obligations and your entitlement obligations but that inflation and this has definitely happened in the past in countries in this situation could very easily turn to hyper hyperinflation And so whether you look at austerity in this reality, where you get bailed out, or you look at this reality over here, in either situation, the, in the medium term, the economy can really fall apart. And it's really not clear how, how, outside of maybe an extra generous bailout, how that, can be, how that can be avoided. And so in that situation, economy falls apart. Economy falls apart. Falls apart. And when economy falls apart in a big way, and you have major social and you have major unemployment it's a scary thing it can lead to social unrest we're not talking about 8 9% 10% unemployment like we have in the united states we're talking about 20 30 40% unemployment even higher in the folks that are likely to be uh, unrestful socially which is the young people and so this could lead to social unrest social unrest and even radicalization of the you know when people get 
When people start worrying about whether they're going to get food on the table and they don't have a job, uh, they might start supporting people who have more radical views. So just that by itself is a very, very scary proposition. The history of Europe tells us that even if relatively small countries in Europe fall apart in this way, it could have repercussions in the rest of Europe. That's how World War I and World War II got started. And so just by that, just that reason alone is reason enough for people for people to think very seriously about bailing Greece out. And that doesn't come without moral consequences. The counter argument is if we bail them out, if we bail them out, doesn't this reward, doesn't this reward mismanagement and overspending? Mis mismanagement. Mismanagement. And even a little bit of shady accounting on their national on their national economic statistics. So there's very good reason if you are a German taxpayer that you're very suspicious of, suspicious of these bailouts. Why do we keep writing checks to the Greeks if they're not willing to take some pain? Now the Greek side of it is look, we've already taken them out of pain. We're already kind of on the brink, possibly crossed the brink. If you take us, if you if you force even more pain on us, then we're going to be in a really where our, our our society is at the risk of falling apart. So we're in desperate situation. This isn't a time to kind of force us uh, to kind of force a moral point on us. So that by itself is reason why people are worried. But then there's even a bigger reason that Greece might not be the only. It's only the first, maybe the worst of the situations. But if Greece falls apart, and especially if the eurozone, if if I should say the European Union or Europe is is not able to bail out Greece, that's an implicit signal to the rest of the world that Europe is not able to essentially bail out its countries. And so you see on this chart right over here, you see on this chart right over here, Greece is not alone. It's definitely the worst, but right behind it you have Portugal. And it's debt, you have long-term debt with interest rates, it looks like it's around in the 12 and 13% range. Portugal has a 93% debt to GDP ratio. It already has a very high unemployment rate. If Greece is allowed to leave the eurozone and does not get bailed out, investors are going to start wondering, well, hey, maybe Portugal's not going to get bailed out. That's going to make people expect more interest from Portugal in order to lend them money. And they need money in order to continue operating in, in, in the way that they're operating. But every increase in a percentage point right over here is going to really eat into Portugal's GDP and kind of force them down this debt spiral. Their debt as a percent of GDP is almost 100%. If they have to pay an extra 1% on that, that 1% is going to eat into their GDP. And it's going to force that Portugal to become the economy to slow down even more and make it even more and more onerous. And then they would just kind of go in the same direction as Greece. And once again, Portugal's not alone. Italy has a very high debt to GDP. Ireland, very high debt to GDP ratio. Spain has a very high unemployment rate. So the fear here, there's I guess there's two major fears. One is Greece by itself can become a point of instability in Europe. But the second fear is if this thing isn't solved, that this could cause kind of a contagion or a chain reaction through Europe, that people start getting freaked out, they start wanting to uh, not lend to these countries, and then that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, well, they might also have to leave the Eurozone.